Hey everyone, it's Yen, and I just wanted to do a nice, fun update video since it's a whole new year. Christmas has passed, New Year's has passed. Unfortunately, I am filming on a night right before a road trip of sorts, just a quick day trip to drop off presents to some family, and then we're going to turn around and come right back home. But they are in another city, and cars decided to break down so i just came from outside working on cars but that's not what we're going to talk about today uh, i'm doing something new a fun little time lapse because in my previous video i said i had ideas for videos i wanted to do and then almost right after that i got an early christmas present which is a wacom drawing tablet so i'm really into art at college my minor is actually in digital art but I've never owned a drawing tablet of my own before so that completely derailed all my video ideas I wanted to spend time using the tablet in the past I've really been into Adobe Illustrator which is a vector art program but I would never been able to really play with Photoshop or any raster graphics programs to do digital painting before. I did get a lot of that practice in and now I'm back and I can make videos. The time lapse that you're watching right now was me using the tablet, but before I started playing around with this, this sticker design where it's, I thought I'd make cats, so I, I'm a cat person. And I really like the idea of wearing them bandanas, and then of course the bandana could be any of the pride flags. But prior to this, I also did some other pieces. I did a still life. I did a fairy, a couture fashion person. And most recently for New Year's, I did a silhouette in a greenhouse. And that was really interesting because before that greenhouse painting, I was using the standard brushes that come in Photoshop and then I realized why am I using the standard brushes that come in, in Photoshop you know these days you can download brushes so haha <laughs> you wouldn't download a brush but I've been watching a lot of Drawfee recently which is a YouTube channel that's been around for I mean much longer I'm very new I mean they Drawfee is not news but they were new to me and watching them, currently it's, it's usually four people who do time lapses or digital drawings and they have great commentary and fun prompts. It's been a great learning experience and that's when I realized they would talk about brushes or the brush packs that they were using. So once I got to the greenhouse digital painting, I was like, oh hey, I should go download some brushes. So. That painting got a little crazy. Sometimes less is better in art. Constricting yourself or limiting yourself can really not only get you to understand the tools you are using better, I think it also makes you more creative. So I might have gotten a little bit of brush overload. That's what you're watching. I thought it would be kind of fun to see. I actually have a Instagram account only for my art. It's not the only art account I've ever had. I mean, I've made maybe three to four art accounts at this point. But the most recent one, I also have an accompanying YouTube channel for just my art way back, or not way back, but previously when I was only doing Adobe Illustrator graphic design type art. And I was kind of not sure if I should just keep my art separate or if I should bring my art to this channel Honestly, I'm, I'm at that phase of creation where I'm just really excited for new things and I think at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what I do as long as I find it enjoyable and then I just keep creating things. I'm not at a point where anything's in stone. Like if I end up deleting any of my projects, which I've done before plenty of times, it's not really going to make a difference. So that's what's new with me most recently all this fun art development going on and binge watching Drawfee videos and then I found out that of the four people on Drawfee some of them have channels where it's just them and they play video games so of course I started binging that as well 
let me also update you on testosterone, of course. Yay. So testosterone, I've been on 10 in injections at this point. I have other videos explaining my dosage and all of that information. So if you really want to know details, you can go look at my channel or past videos. And something that surprised me that if I were to tell myself, my younger self or any, any people out there, I guess, starting testosterone or wondering about it, for someone like me, who's not a fan of needles, it actually, it gets better, but it also doesn't get better. <laughs> that's probably not really a surprise. It, that's not something that, I, I probably should have known this is what I'm saying. But after injecting myself 10 weeks in a row at this point, it, it does get better. I've gotten faster at it, but it also, the anxiety about it doesn't go away. I wasn't expecting that. I thought that, you know, maybe by the eighth, ninth, tenth time, not only would I be faster at it, not only would I not procrastinate as much to do it, but the, the actual action itself, the moment after you, you know, disinfect the bottle and inject your medicine and put on your second needle, I thought the moment, all of that's fine. That process is actually kind of fun to do. The moment of injection, I really thought that would get better. And honestly, for me, it hasn't. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. I know I, I've tried different methods for my process to try and make it easier on myself. I actually have created a playlist of relaxing piano music. And this playlist, I call it No Vocals, of my relaxing piano music. I used to play that kind of before I was gonna do my injection to calm myself down. And then as I was injecting my medicine and everything, I would put on, I would still be listening to the piano music. And then I would continue listening to it as I was injecting myself. And then when I was done, I was done. And then I realized, okay, what I don't want to do is train myself to be afraid of the piano music. I don't know. <laughs> like that timeline was too long. It was too many minutes listening to the piano music. And it's not these grand composed pieces. They're very simple or they sound simple to me. So I realized, okay, in order to avoid training myself to be afraid of calm piano music, <laughs> which is not what we want. I would watch YouTube videos of just whoever I watch normally, whether it's news or video games or art, usually people talking to try and normalize and calm myself down. Cause I do that so much outside of my injections. Like I don't usually listen to relaxing piano music, but I do watch YouTube videos. So I would watch my regular YouTube videos the whole time, just calming myself down. Okay, this is a normal day. Cleaning my needle, or not my needles, but cleaning the bottle and preparing my syringe and medicine. And then once everything's ready to go for me to inject, then I would switch to the piano music. Because something that's interesting is when I'm sitting <laughs> with my prepared medicine, w trying to convince myself to stick it in my leg, I kind of go into this funny state, it's probably the adrenaline, where I don't know how much time is passing. I could be sitting there for 10 seconds, I could be sitting there for a minute, five minutes. I just know I'm sitting here until I do it. I, What I can't do, what I will not allow myself to do, is go through the whole process, sit, and then not do it. Because not only does that waste medicine and, and needles, but then I know that means that I can not do it and I don't want to give myself that idea <laughs> so it I'm not as worried about training myself to dislike piano music because at that point reality is gone it's just me and my adrenaline and this needle and sticking it in my leg and pushing it in I also have to remind myself in those moments that this this is maybe two minutes of my whole entire week of all the minutes in a week this only comprises of maybe two minutes but you know, when you're afraid of something, even if you know it's good for you or that you, you want it and you really enjoy it and you've paid a lot of money for it, fears 
and anxieties can be irrational. And you also have to tell yourself in the middle of being in that state, it's okay to take your time. You, you, it's an interesting balance of telling yourself, it's okay to be nervous. Yes, it's scary. Take your time. No one's rushing you. Do not, don't do it when you have an appointment to go to or something, because that even makes you more stressed. Um, but at the same time, not letting yourself just not do it. So yeah, 10 injections later, I'm better and not better at, <laughs> at injecting. Uh, breathing's really important. Breathing is the thing that gets me through. And I have to make an O shape when I breathe. I don't know why. Maybe it helps me because I'm focusing so much. Um, another thing is it's good to alternate if you're doing intramuscular injection, which thigh you inject into every week. So I keep a, on my calendar the number of the injection. So the way I remember is odd days for me are my left leg and even days are my right leg. So that's a great tip. Another thing is because it was winter break and I'm a college student, I had to get or request my injection, excuse me, not that, my prescription of the medicine to be transferred to a different pharmacy. So I was initially getting it at my college pharmacy, but I don't live in my college town. I live in a different city. So I think I had done it before for another prescription. I don't remember what in the past. And usually it's a pretty simple procedure. You can do it online, but because testosterone is a controlled substance, you can't just do a transfer online. The new pharmacy you want your medication transferred to, you have to call them and give them the information of the current pharmacy, so the name and the phone number and maybe an address so that they can call and talk to your current pharmacy and they'll take care of the rest. But yeah, that was something that was a little odd and took a little, it took an afternoon to figure that out. I was calling people back and forth trying to see what I needed to do to get that done. But after that, it was very quick. It was just like any other prescription. Okay, so let's talk about New Year's stuff. And I have hopes for what's going to be coming up this year. For me personally, just because I'm going to be graduating college, I'm going to be starting a new job, I'm going to be moving to a different city. Those are all very big things. And I'm very thankful to have those things in my life because I know a lot of friends and even family members who they've kind of had some of those goals delayed or even taken away from them and I think if it, if it was any other year I would be happy but just kind of like oh, okay this is what I planned for but because of everything that's happened in the last year it means I think a lot more to me <laughs> and I'm also just really scared that those things are going to be taken away. Like I'm, I'm going to be honest, there's, there's part of my brain that is pretty analytical and is thinking, okay, there's statistics out there about infection rates and at risk and yada, yada. And okay, it's generally a good practice to socially distance and wear a mask and get tested every once in a while. But then there's also another part of me that again going back to anxieties where i'm terrified i have this i have this fear that i'm gonna get sick in any way that is debilitating i'm not gonna be able to finish my last semester of college then after that i'm not gonna be able to go to my new job that i had set up they're not gonna accept me and then it's gonna be very difficult to enter the job market <laughs> A lot of people probably have similar experiences, doomsday scrolling or wanting to keep up with news, but also not wanting to keep up with news. A lot of YouTube is for escapism. I use it for escapism, that's for sure. But because this is a very new channel and this is kind of one of the first videos where I don't have a one subject specific thing I'm talking about, we're just hanging out. I'm showing you some cat art. We're hanging out talking about New Year's stuff. I'm not going to 
ignore it. Also because a lot of these videos are also for me. Speaking of things that are for me, I don't know if y'all can tell, but my voice definitely has gotten lower. I know I mentioned it a little bit previously, but at this point I can feel it. And I think that naturally my, my natural voice wants to fight it a little bit or thinks it feels weird. Not necessarily uncomfortable, just different. But I've been kind of experimenting with intentionally trying to drive my voice lower sometimes just to not shy away from it and to see how, see how it feels. So that's been really fun and exciting. And this will be interesting because I, there was, I don't know how long the gap was exactly between this video and the last one, but I'm interested to hear the difference between the two. Honestly, I probably won't make these ones specifically into stickers. This was an experiment. It was a proof of concept. I struggle a lot with drawing in a cartoon style or a simplistic style where the line work is very clean or prominent. I think that's because even when I draw traditionally with pencil or if I paint with acrylics, I like shading a lot and I like trying to render things very close to reality. So it was very difficult for me to do these cats. <laughs> they were actually a lot more, I, I fussed with them a lot more than I probably do with any of my other digital paintings that I showed earlier, just because those are come more naturally to me. But even though I, I probably won't use these cats specifically, I might clean up the design or make a simpler design in the future. The shading's kind of muddy. Again, I think the shading on the bandana is a little, nah. Um, but maybe I'll put them up on my Redbubble shop, and if I do that, then I'll say something about it here. I, I think at the end of the day, I'm not gonna merge, for now, my old art account and this current YouTube channel, just because I do commissions for people or portraits, designs, profile photos, presents, and I think I want to keep the emails separate because they, they do have two different YouTube accounts. Thanks for hanging out with me and just hearing the fun update. I might play video games in the future. I might do more pride or LGBT themed drawings, speed drawings that you'll get to see on this channel. I might do educational videos about fun LGBT research or history or figures. Who knows? Anything could happen. Thanks for sticking around and I hope to see you later.